Well, we are so excited that you're here. We had a, an amazing time uh, yesterday. We had the Back to School Bash, uh, and I'm telling you, it was absolutely incredible. If you served in that, I just want to say thank you. You guys did awesome. I got a couple of numbers I want to just tell you about what happened, because you were part of that. We actually have a, a budget just for outreach, and so it's in our budget to do local outreach. This, of course, was a big event. Uh, we had 300 backpacks to give away, a lot of food. A lot of that got donated. A lot of you guys plugged in and helped us with that, so we just want to say thank you for that. You guys did an incredible job. But here's some of the numbers I want to tell you. 70 Dream Teamers showed up. Come on, somebody. Give it up for the Dream Team. You guys, give it up for yourself. We paid y'all triple time yesterday for showing up on a Saturday, and your check is in the mail. Uh, So we're so grateful you came. And we needed every single one of you because 490 people came through the gates yesterday. Come on. Hey, give somebody give Jesus some praise on that. 490. 490. We had 720 hot dogs cooked, 900 drinks, uh, six pounds of bacon. I just threw that in there. They did bacon for some of the team members got bacon. The, 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 the anointing was on the grill, uh, so the, we had a little bit of bacon. So 900 drinks, 56 haircuts. We gave away 56 haircuts. That's a big deal. We had four stylists over, I think, about four hours, so they were, they were very busy. Uh, they were worn out. Their fingers are probably about to start bleeding. Uh, they did an awesome job. We gave away 300 backpacks with the school supplies, not just backpacks, but with school supplies. And by the way, those also had names put on. So we had a silhouette team that was at just, it was, we called it the sweatshop. I mean, it was hot in there. Uh, they, it was warm. I mean, we, were, we, didn't, you know, we didn't give them no water. We neglected them a little. No, I'm kidding. We, we brought them food and water. But, but they were just getting after it, man. And so we had, I think, uh, five, four or five stations set up and a bunch of presses. It was awesome. And so these kids not only just got a backpack, but got their name put on it, whatever they wanted on it. So it was really awesome. Uh, so anyway, we had the backpacks with the school supplies and the names. We gave away 100 of the little salvation bracelets that, that describe uh, the walk from um, – salvation into your growth with the different color beads. You've probably seen those. A hundred of those were given away. We gave away 283 tracts. A tract is a little booklet that you give people to tell them about Jesus just so they can go read it. And these were very powerful tracts. We gave away 283 of those. Uh, we had parents that were coming up and wanting tracts. They wanted to see what it was about. And one little girl, I heard about one little girl, she looked at it. She looked at the mom. She said, we want to show dad this. He needs this when we get home. And so we had a lot of people that they're going to find Jesus through those tracks. It was awesome. Uh, here's the most important number of all, bar none, of all this stuff, all the numbers I gave you. We had four salvations yesterday. Come on. Four people. The angels were rejoicing. So awesome. Uh, uh, here's another number I got from Whitley. Uh, she walked over 12,000 steps yesterday. Uh, she's very big. The outreach, hey, let's give it up for the outreach team, man. Man, they, they did an awesome job and killed it. Killed it, killed it, killed it. People were coming to ask me questions like, I don't know. I don't know where that is. I don't know who's doing that. Go find Whitley. She's about this tall. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, and go find her. But anyway, they did an awesome job. It was it ran smoothly. The only problem we had was parking. We had people parking on top of each other. It was crazy, but that's a good problem to have. It was awesome. We had such a good time. In fact, we did a recap video. We want you to check this recap video out if you missed it yesterday. Watch this. It looked as fun as it, I mean, it was as fun as it looked. We had such a good time yesterday. Uh, and so hopefully you were a part of that. If you weren't, you can jump in next week. I mean, ne- not next week. We're going to do that again next week? 
Willie's like, uh uh-uh, we got to do Christmas next. Uh, so, I mean, I'm tell- we have, uh, Willie told us at the beginning, she said, I know some of you don't know what we're about to do yet, but when this is all over, you're not going to be able to wait to do it again. And it is absolutely true. If you did it for the first time yesterday, it was such a blast. We had such a good time and got to show the love of Jesus. And I told the team before we started, I said, we're not giving away backpacks. We're not giving away tracks. We're not, we're not even giving away food. We're giving away Jesus. That's what we're giving away. We've got to remember that. And I had so many people make comments about everybody in red shirts. We had our red serve shirts on. I see a couple here today. We had a red serve shirts on, and they said everybody with red shirts on were just so happy. They just, they looked like they wanted to be here, and we did, man. It was just, it was a blast, not just because we got free food and drinks, but just because we love Jesus, and, we wanted, and there was some bacon involved. That's, some people were here for the bacon, um, but anyway, it was just such a good time. I'm just telling you, like, like it, was, it was a lot of work. We were tired. We were exhausted, but it was so worth every second that we spent. All right, well, today I, I am going to preach. You know, uh, Emily preached a little bit from the stage. Johnny preached a little bit, and then Dad got to preach. I guess it's my turn. It's a family thing. We're going to turn it to a family thing today. But I want to give you, today I want to give you uh, some things that you need to do to, uh, to sidestep uh, something Satan wants you to believe. Satan has a secret. In fact, I call it his dirty little secret. Well, that's just the name of my message today. Satan's dirty little secret. He's got a secret that he does not want you to know about. If you understand this secret about Satan uh, and, you, and you actually wrap your mind around this thought that sounds crazy, uh, you're going you're gonna to pray differently, you're going to live differently, you're going to read the Bible differently. I'm just telling you, it will help you really understand uh, where he's coming from. But he's got, he's got a secret that, you don't need to, that he doesn't want you to know about because if you get a hold of this, it's really going to change you. Uh, but we have to go all the way back to the beginning, all the way back to Isaiah where God is talking about how Satan fell. He gives us some specifics about why Satan fell from heaven. So watch this. The Bible says, uh, this is them talking about, uh, the, Isaiah is talking about the devil here. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. Now listen, he was a, this was the best looking dude in heaven. I mean, this guy, he was uh, covered in stones. In fact, in the presence of God, he just reflected God's glory. He was absolutely gorgeous. He was the choir leader of heaven. He was really the number two guy in heaven besides God. I mean, it, he was up there. He was almost as high as you can be. He says, how you have uh, you fallen, you son of, the, uh, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. And watch this. You said in your heart, you said something to yourself, you, you mumbled something to yourself, you really believed this when you said it. Uh, this is important for us to get to this morning. I want you to see this this morning. We'll talk more about this in a minute. But when you say stuff in your heart, it, it, it really impacts you. In fact, when you say it out loud, it really makes a bigger impact on the people around you. Uh, please don't ever call your, pe- your kids stupid. Please don't ever, don't ever call your kids a loser. Don't ever do that. Don't call yourself an idiot. Don't do that. I said, because what happens, what you say to yourself is going to manifest later. He said, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. So he says, where I am not, it's not good enough. I want to get above the stars of God. I'm, I'm going to elevate myself. He says, I will sit enthroned on the Mount of the Assembly in the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. Watch this. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds, and I will make myself like the Most High. He said, I will make myself like the Most High. And what he was saying was, I'm here. I want to be here. He said, I'm, in fact, if you read that verse, we call those the I wills. Five times in two verses, Satan said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Now, Johnny mentioned this earlier about the spirit of control. That's what it says. I will. I'm going to do this. I don't care what anybody says. This is what I'm doing. You're not going to tell me what to do. Uh, and he talked about sitting at a four-way stop and somebody waving him on. Uh, he's an angry driver. He used to be. I mean, you don't want to ride with this dude because he would run somebody off the road just for looking at him crazy. I mean, that's what control does. He says, I will. The devil says, I will. I'm going to do these things. I'm going to make myself like the most high. But he said to himself, here's what I want to tell you today. When you talk to yourself, um, listen to what you're saying. Because it's going to impact the next moments of your life. Because here's what I know. We become what we say to ourselves. We become what we say to ourselves. So when you say to yourself, I'm an idiot, guess what? You're going to be, that's just, that's what your spirit's going to believe it. You can't tell, talk to yourself. When you say something to yourself, make sure it's positive. And this is what the devil wants you to think. The devil wants you to think that you're near. The devil wants you to think that you're not good enough. The devil wants you to think that you're never going to take the steps that God wants you to take. You, we are what we become, what we say to ourselves. So here's what really, here's his, I'm going to give you his secret out the gate this morning because we need to talk about it. We need to you know, unpack this thing. Um, by the way, uh, I forgot to say this earlier. Jeremy's not here. We gave him two weeks off, uh, which he reluctantly took. 
uh, after being with the youth for a week, we said, hey, man, take a breather, take a... So that's why he wasn't here this morning. When I said unpack, he's got a preacher friend that that's his favorite pastor that says unpack. So I want to say unpack just, in, just, to, just in, uh, to, to give uh, Jeremy some honor today. So we just, just when you see him next week or whenever he, he'll be back here next week, uh, just make sure you give him a big old high five. I had no clue what all he did around here until he wasn't here for the last two weeks. So we're, we're calling people, texting people, trying not to bug him. But he does such a good job, and we just appreciate him. I just had to throw that in there real quick. Okay, back to the message. Sorry, I chase a little rabbit there. But we become what we say to ourselves, and the devil, wants, the devil knows this. And so if he can get you thinking wrongly, you're going to start speaking wrongly. And so it's, this is very important. I really want you to get this. Um, uh, this, is, this is so big for us to get because here's what really, really he said. If I were to paraphrase what he said in Isaiah 14, this is what he said. He said in his heart, I'm not good enough. That's really what he said. And do you know that the devil wants you to believe the same lie, that you're not good enough? You, you, you're never going to be able to pray like that person prays. You're never going to be able to have the gifts and the callings that that person has. You're never going to be the, the father that that person is going to be or that, that that person is. Listen, he, he said in his heart, really, if you paraphrase it, he said in his heart, I'm not good enough. And I don't know about you, but I've had those thoughts before. And, and here, here's, Satan's, here's Satan's secret that he wants to project onto you because we see him do it in Scripture. I'll show you in a minute. Um, well, let me, let me just let me back up just a second. You know, one of the things that we struggle with, that I struggle with sometimes, is, is, is insecurity. It, really struggling with, um, you know, am I good enough? Now, not so much as being a parent or a husband, because I'm an amazing parent husband. Just ask my wife and kids. I just, I really am. I'm, I'm awesome. But there are some areas in my life I struggle with, because I look at what other people are doing, and I'm like, man, that, that person's really got it together. Well, that person's just, he's a great leader. That person's really got big vision. That person's got it going on. How can I, how can I do that? But what I don't understand, I'm looking at them through this crazy filter that we call social media. And we are, we are, we are, we are damaging some of our kids because they are comparing their lives to what everybody else's looks like. So we look at other people's lives and we go, well, their grass is greener. The grass, the grass is always greener. Here's why. The grass is greener because it's AstroTurf. It ain't real. Somebody told me this morning as they were leaving, they said, sometimes the grass is greener, greener because it's growing over a septic system. Come on, somebody. That's pretty good right there. That's a message in that. It's, it's not real. Listen, what you see on social media in their life, that ain't real. See, see here's, here's, what, here's what happens. Here's what we struggle. We're looking at other people's lives, and we're looking at their Instagram. They have, listen, they have an Instagram front with a camera roll reality. Yeah, anybody ever give you their phone? They want you to see this cool picture they took, and it's like, you know, sunrise or something cool. And so you look at it, you flip through a few, and you don't know it, but that's all they want you to look at. You keep flipping. Like, oh, hold up, hold up. I don't want you to see that. I didn't have makeup on at that point. Or, or man, I had that sore on my leg. I, I just took a picture so I could compare it to MD Anderson or whatever, MD.com or whatever that, that website is. They don't want you to see, they don't want you to see all the bad stuff. They don't want you to see when your hair wasn't fixed. You ever done this? You ever been on your phone and you accidentally hit a button and it flipped the camera on you while you were laying in bed still? That's rough right there. Would you ever post that? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of us, some of us is worse than others. Yo, we would never go, man, that's going to look good on Instagram. That's going to look good. No, because we got an Instagram front with a camera roll reality. But I, here's what I want to tell you. Everybody's doing it. So when you compare yourself to somebody else, you, you have that insecurity. It's going to create cracks in your foundation of who God made you to be, and it's going it's to be trouble. It's, so here's his secret. Let me give you his secret real quick. Here's Satan's secret. Uh, he's insecure. Satan is insecure. Now, here's how I know he's insecure, because he's got a big mouth. He's got nothing to back it up. That sucker will lie and cheat and steal. Yeah, yeah, you ever, you know those people, you got those friends that are just, all they do is talk smack. They just, they don't ever shut up. You don't have to worry about them, do you? Because they ain't got nothing to back it up. It's the quiet dude standing in the corner. That's the one you got to worry about. Uh, the, the people that talk and smack all the time, I ain't, you, if you're talking that much, you ain't got nothing to back it up. The devil's all talk. Listen, he's got no game behind it. He's been defeated. He's been stripped of everything that he's got. He is insecure because of who he is now. But it all started with, with who he wanted to be. He, he didn't want to be who God made him to be. He wanted to be somebody else. This is so, we got, we got to get this. Satan is insecure. If you don't believe me, go back and read when Jesus would cast out demons. And just look at their responses. Oh, oh they run in their mouth until Jesus shows up. And they're like, oh, don't destroy us. Uh, don't send us into the pigs. Or send us into the pigs, but don't kill us. Listen, they're the very, he's very insecure. Just listen to what the demons say when Jesus shows up. Listen, they got nothing to back it up. And the devil wants you to be as insecure as he is. Because look at what he said. He says this. He says, I will make myself 
like the Most High. I, I'm going to do it. I, we just read this a while ago. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself. That's not who I am. I'm going to make myself bigger than I really am. I'm going to make myself that person. And he, here's, what, here's what I want you to see this morning. He wants to project that on you because he did it to Adam. If you go back and read, I've never seen this before until I was studying for this message. Go back and read. Look at what he does in Genesis chapter 3. Before I go there real quick, let me just tell you this. God creates Adam and Eve. Actually, he creates Adam. He creates the animals. And God says, let's find you a helpmate. Let's see if we can find somebody that can help you out of these animals. Obviously, that's what he was looking for. Can you imagine? You know Adam had to help God. So they probably made a master list of who was going to be Adam's helpmate out of all the animals before he made Eve. I wonder who made the top ten of that list. You know dogs had to be at the top, right? You know who's the last on the list? Cats. Yes. Somebody said cats. I heard you. Yes, cats are on the bottom of the list because they are demon possessed. No, not all of them. Some of them are. All the ones that I know. We have a cat that thinks he's a dog. It's really weird. But can you imagine that list? Like God's looking through the animals trying to find Adam a helpmate. And you know a golden retriever was about the highest he got and it still wasn't good enough. So he creates Eve. But before he ever creates Eve, he tells Adam, don't eat of that tree. You can have everything you want. Eve's not even created yet, and God says, Adam, don't eat of that tree. Now, God creates Eve, of course, out of Adam's rib, creates Eve, and then he tells Eve, uh, obviously he gave Eve the wrong information because she misquoted what God told Adam. Go back and read it. I don't have time to get into it today. But then we see the, the serpent show up because Eve didn't have the word. Adam did. Adam didn't give Eve the right word. So here Eve is, and now she's gullible. She's not, she's not gullible. She's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She's uh, susceptible to somebody coming in. She's, she, she doesn't really have the word that God gave her, so therefore she's going to make herself open up to a, a, an incorrect word. So the devil comes along, and the devil says, listen, that, that, he didn't really say that, and he really didn't say what she said. He said something different. That's a whole other story. You've got to go back and read it for yourself. But here's what I want you to see here in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. This is what the devil told Eve. Watch this. For God knows that when you eat from it, the tree he's talking about, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God. See, the very lie that got, that, that got Satan kicked out of heaven is the very lie that he told Adam and Eve. If, you, if you'll just either, if you can be like God. I tried, I, I, I tried to do it. It didn't work for me, so let me go get this, get somebody else hung up on this thing. Uh, see, see can, we start comparing ourselves and saying, I want to be, I'm here, but I really want to be there. We start comparing ourselves to other people and go, I'm just not good enough. I just don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can take those steps. I don't know if I can ever be that person. We start comparing ourselves, and listen, this is a very dangerous trap. Because here's what I know, um, Satan, the comparison is a sin. We start, in other words, we're discontent with who God created us to be. And I'm, I'm just going to, we're family here today, I'm going to get real with you. Um, this is something I struggle with. Again, not as a father, not as a husband, but as a leader, I, I, as a pastor, I struggle with comparing myself to other people. So I've gotten off of social media, I've done all those things. We were at a conference back in April. And uh, this guy was speaking, and I can't remember what he was speaking on, but God was just speaking in my heart about this issue. And I said, God, why can't I shake this? Why do I have to keep comparing myself? I can't even enjoy the ministry that you've given me. I can't even enjoy, enjoy the gifts that you've given me. I'm comparing myself to everybody else. And here's what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. You ever pray and ask God a question, and he gave you the answer before you even finished asking the question? He gave me the answer before I ever finished the question, and here's what he told me. It's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, you, the, the pro, your problem is that you have tied your worth to your wins. In other words, how good you perform is, is your, that's how worthy you think you are. And that's not true. You've tied your worth to your wins. And so here's what I would do. I'm, just, I'm getting real with you guys. I don't like this about myself. I'm working on it. But what, what you do is when you don't have a win, you find somebody else who's losing. I'm getting, I'm getting raw right now. I hope some of y'all are receiving this this morning. Some of y'all are looking at me like, oh, my God, I'm leaving this church. I can't believe this dude. I'm just, I'm just getting real with y'all. I'm just getting real. Like, when, you, when I don't feel like I'm winning, I'm going to find somebody else that I feel like is doing less than me, and I'm going to be like, okay, whew, I'm not as bad as him. I got a neighbor that don't even go to church, so I went to church this morning, Jesus, so I, whew, I'm still better than somebody. Maybe I'm the only one struggling here. Let me move on before I get myself into a deeper hole. Here's how we're supposed to act. We're not supposed to be comparing ourselves. We're supposed to be loving each other. I told the team, like I said yesterday, we're giving Jesus. We're giving agape. We're not giving food. We're giving agape. Here's what he says. He says, above all, above everything else, I want you to love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. No matter what they're struggling with, no matter what they're going through, just love them. Listen, we loved on some people that don't look anything like us yesterday. We loved, we loved on some people that are really struggling in some areas yesterday. We loved on some people that I would probably not even know in, uh, outside of this realm of, of being a pastor in the places that I go and the things that I do. I, God just, God's bringing people. He said, I just want you to love them. 
Don't compare yourself to them, just love on them. See, he didn't say above everything, compare yourself and see if they deserve love. He says you got to love them deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. See, we got to watch how we treat other people because it, it determines how far we go in our Christian walk. Because here, here, here's, here's what I want you to see. My job is to overlook other sins, not oversee them. See, my job is to, is to love them anyway. See, I'm, I'm comparing myself and going, you know, I'm here. They're probably down here somewhere. Whew, I'm good now. I've put myself above somebody. I'm just getting real with y'all. This is how the devil works. He wants you to feel as insecure as he does, and you're never more like the devil, obviously when you're hating people, but you're never more like the devil than when you're insecure. Because you, because you're wounded, and wounded people wound people. When you don't know who you are in Christ and where your fit is, you'll do some dangerous, dangerous things. Here's what he tells us to do, and this is there's a whole other message in here. He says, "This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gifts that you have." In, in other words, I've given you some gifts, but you got to work on them. Some of you, God's given you incredible gifts, but you haven't been working on them. I go back and I've listened to, to video or or, or, or um, uh, audio files and watched videos of when we first started here. Now, six years ago when I pastored, it, it's hard to watch for me to see myself preach six years ago. I want to throw up in my mouth a little bit. I'll be honest with you. Because I'm trying to hone it. I'm trying to get better. And I go back and watch myself like, oh, man, how did, why are people still coming? Because I'm trying to get better. I'm looking at where I was. I'm saying, God, I want to be so much better. And I'm nowhere near where I'm supposed to be. We're supposed to be content with what God gave us. Somebody else's gift is not making them more important than you. You have your own gift. He said, you need to fan it into flames. Work on it. Dig into it. Find out what it is. And look at this. And here's why. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but a power of love and a self-discipline. Here's why. He says, I want you to act like this. Act like this. Because, because God gave you this. He gives you power and of a sound mind. And God wants you to walk in that. Now, let me give you three things. I've got to fly through these real quick. But uh, I want to give you three things really fast this morning that's going to help you negate the lie the devil wants to tell you, that, to help you not feel insecure like the devil wants you to. Let me give you three things that you are. Here's number one. Uh, and I put I because I want you to write it this way. I am a winner, not a sinner. I am a winner, not a sinner. And, and I hate the phrase. I've heard it a thousand times. I'm just a poor old sinner saved by grace. No, you're not. You're so much more than that. Listen, you're not tied to what you, what you do is not who you are. That's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. What you've done is not who you are. The devil wants you to believe that what you've done is who you are. No. His faith is sealed, but yours is not. I am a winner. I said, look, at what he's, look at what he says. Let me just give you these verses real quick. Can anyone separate, anything ever separate us from Christ's love? And I want you to see the three things I'm giving you this morning, they're all because of this, because of Christ's love. And I, I've never seen that before, but I want you to watch this. It's because of Christ's love. Does it mean that we no longer, uh, he no longer loves us if we trouble, have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or, we have, or we're hungry or we're destitute or we're in anger, I'm sorry, danger, or threatened with death? Watch this. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours. Despite everything that we're going through, doesn't matter what you've been through. No matter your past, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. Now, that word is Nico. It's hypernikeo. It really means Nico is where it actually Nike got their name. And it means more than conquer. It means bigger victory. It doesn't mean a last second three-pointer at the buzzer. It means you won the game the first 10 seconds of the game. It's an overwhelming victory. That's who he's made us to be. Here's number two. So we're winners, not sinners. But watch this. We're also sitting with Jesus. Now, this one's big. We are sitting with Jesus. And where you're sitting dictates how you act. If you don't believe me, uh, listen to the conversation that you have with your kids before you go to dinner out to eat somewhere. Because they're sitting there like, okay, don't throw rolls like we do at home. We're not going to do that here. Are you going to somebody's, they have a nice house and a nice dining room table, and everybody starts passing the food to the left? You don't do that at home. You can dig in and get as fast as you can get it, you know? I mean, at home you got portions like this size, and you go to somebody's house, you get three green beans. You know what I'm talking about. You've all done it. Listen, where, where you sit matters. Understand where you're sitting. You're actually sitting with Jesus. And I, here, let me give you the proof. Watch this. It says, but because of his great love, there it is again. This is why he did it, because of his great love and his rich in, he's rich in mercy. He made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And watch verse 6. He says, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. You're sitting with Jesus. So, so what I want to challenge you today is let's start believing that we're sitting with Jesus. Let's start acting like we're sitting with Jesus. He's actually seated us with him in heavenly realms. That's a big deal. Here's number three. So that's who you are, uh, uh, and then that's where you are. But check this out. Here's number three. I'm a prince, not a pauper. You're a princess and not a pauper. You are. Listen, you're, you're royalty. Did you know that? I was uh, watching uh, Prince Harry's uh, wedding. Oh, wait. 
let me backtrack. I wasn't watching his wedding, okay? I was watching the ESPN and it popped up, okay? So I'm watching it, and this was years ago because he's been married for, uh, I think it's three-year anniversary is coming up. I, I don't really, I'm picking, I don't know this. I, I just happened to see it pop up on the news, and I, and I had this thought. There's people everywhere, cameras everywhere. He's getting off a really nice plane, walking on red carpet, and I thought, what did he do to deserve that? He was born, that's all he did. He was just born. He was born into royalty. Let me tell you, when you say yes to Jesus, you're born into royalty. You're a prince, not a pauper. And a pauper is, is a person who's bankrupt. They don't have anything. You're a prince, not a pauper. You've got to believe this. Watch this. This is what he says to us in Revelations. To him who loved us, there we see it again. Every time, it's because he loved us. It's because he loved us. It's because he loved you. He washed us, he washed us from our sins with his own blood. And watch this. He has made us kings and priests. He's made us kings and priests to his, to, to his uh, God and Father, and to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever. Listen, he made us kings and priests. You're a prince, not a pauper. That's who you are. That's who God created you to be. When you said yes to Jesus, you became uh, supernatural royalty. You actually have royalty running through your veins because you belong to Jesus. It's who you are. You're king. You're, he made us to be kings and priests. And the devil, does, he'll do anything that he can through your relationships, through your finances, through your, through your belief system to keep you from believing this right here. He'll do anything he can to stop because once you get a hold of this, he's in trouble. Listen, one, can you imagine? A, I actually heard a story. I can't remember the guy's name, but he died a millionaire. He didn't even know it. He had inheritance passed down to him. He died a he, he was actually a bum. I mean, he, was a, he was a homeless guy on the street living, uh, sleeping on uh, park benches, and he died a millionaire. He didn't even know it. That's a true story. I have to find his name. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But some of us, we are living like paupers, and God's saying, you're a prince. You have way more than you think you have. Because here's what, here's what the devil wants. He want, does not want you to be like Jesus. He wants to stop you from believing. Because when, when you believe these things, you're going to start living like them. When you believe these things, you start living like Jesus. And he doesn't want that. So watch this. He fell from heaven because he wanted to be like God. He told Adam the fall of mankind. The reason we have sin in the world today is because he told Adam. Here's what he told him. He said, you can be like God if you just eat this fruit. It's the lie of the, the, the devil. But here's, watch this. When Jesus comes back, and he's coming back soon. Anybody believe he's coming back soon? I believe he's coming back soon. Yeah. Four people are going to be ready. All right, let's go. But here's what the Bible says, and the devil hates this, and he does not want you to know about Jesus and how to find him because here's what he knows. It, it, check this truth out because he knows the Bible. 1 John 3, 2, but we know that when Christ appears, when he comes back to get us, we shall be like him. I want you to get that this morning. The reason he fell from heaven, the reason we have sin in the world, and the reason he doesn't want you to know Jesus is because you get to be like him, which he'll never get to be. Listen, he's insecure. Some of you are struggling with some stuff. You have insecurities this morning. You need to lay them down because those insecurities will not help you walk in the power God wants you to walk in. What do you need to lay down this morning? What is it that's, that, that's, that's keeping you from taking that step? That when you, when you think, here, here's how you know what it is. When you think about taking that step to start that Bible study, to lead your family in a certain direction, to, to pray over somebody that you don't know in the middle of the store, what's the first thought that comes to your head? You can't do that because that's your insecurity. And it works on me every time. Well, not every time. Sometimes I just tell the devil. When I recognize the devil, I tell him to shut up and I just do what God called me to do. But that's, that, you, you got to work on that. I'm still working on that. You have some insecurity that's keeping you from being Jesus or somebody else. Don't let that happen again today. Stop it today. Believe those things. Listen, you are a winner, not a sinner. You're a prince, not a pauper. You are sitting with Jesus. Read those scriptures that we had this morning. And just let that sink into your spirit and receive that, that you are more than the devil tells you that you are. It's time for the church to step up. We don't have a lot of time. Jesus is coming back. We're going to be like him one day, and we've got to step up. It's time for us to stop believing the lie of the devil. His dirty little secret is that he's insecure, and he wants you to be the same way. It's time to stop.